Welcome to week eight. This is Redhead Goes Healthy. Um, if you are new here, I am on a 12 week keto reset and I have made it to week number eight. Um, <laughs> you know, I again am kind of shocked that I have made it this far doing keto and sticking to it and I wanted to um, do my normal thing where I kind of briefly go over the last week and how it went, where the struggles were, how I overcame those struggles. But I also today wanted to try and talk through what has been motivating me. How am I able to do this? So I'm gonna start with that. Then what I'm gonna do is talk about my week and then I'm going to give you guys my measurements. So I uh, weigh in every three weeks. So next week will be week nine and that will be my third weigh in video. And uh, today will just be my measurements and we'll see um, if I have gone down, if I stayed the same. Uh, so stay tuned for all of that. So I had a friend who helped me really stay focused on uh, doing keto and he is an excellent chef. He was asking me, how have you been staying motivated? Well, why is this different from other times that you've tried to do keto? Because I have done keto in the past. The longest that I've ever done it is about 30 days, as I've said before. Now I'm doing, I'm on, what is it? Day 56, day 57, whatever the math is for, you know, eight weeks. How am I staying motivated? What's different this time? I'll be honest with you guys. I hit a pretty dark place a couple of months ago. And uh, I think there was a reason why I wasn't posting as often as I, I, you know, was doing when I just started this channel. I really felt depressed. I, I moved to a new place and it was during a pandemic and I started a new job and I just found myself choosing convenience over everything else. And so I ended up gaining, gaining weight. So I really felt like I hit a low point back in January, end of January, where I was just noticing physically that I just was not feeling well. So I, I kind of felt like I was faced with a decision back then. Do I continue? to see if there's anything even beneath rock bottom or do I make a change? And I just decided that I was gonna do a 12 week keto reset just to see if I still believed in myself. So this journey uh, more than anything has been very empowering to me because it has reminded myself that I am capable of, of doing things that are good for me. And um, I feel like I'm hopefully going to, you know, channel that and use that to continue with this uh, new lifestyle for as long as I possibly can. Um, you know, it hasn't been easy all the time, but, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, talk through just briefly, what are the things right now that are keeping me motivated? And I kind of put them into just like three different three different categories, if you will. The first one is, uh, you saw at the beginning of my channel, I have this, um, you know, uh, basically like it's turned into a quote book and every single day I rip off, you know, the post-it note and underneath each post-it note is a quote. And I made this book 12 weeks ago or eight weeks ago, right? So I don't even remember what's, you know, underneath the, the post-its, which is really cool. It's a reminder that the version of myself that existed eight weeks ago believes in me, like the current person that I am right now. And then it also helps me to feel motivated for the future version of myself. So I'm very thankful for the past version of myself for setting this up for me. And then related to that is this sort of, you know, planner thing that I've been sharing with you guys. Um, again, it's super messy, but it's really, really been helpful just to write things down and to track and to basically turn the tracking into a habit. I think that's been one of the greatest um, 
the greatest accomplishments that I've that I've had so far that I've felt is that I'm actually um, turning this into something that's almost second nature right now. And I'm the type of person that needs to write things down. I've tried using like apps on phones and I'm just not nearly as motivated when I have to go to my phone to plug something in. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. The second thing are the YouTube channels and the YouTube community. Um, I'm going to tag a couple of you guys down below because if others don't know about you, they need to know about you. So I'm thinking in particular Fitness Fits Ashley. And uh, so her channel is so fun. Her channel is informative. She's so fun to watch. Um, so shout out to you, Ashley. You've actually really like helped me to stay motivated. Uh, every single day she'll post something that's helpful. If you are on a weight loss or health journey, uh, it's very practical advice and it's very like down to earth and, and grounded and um, honest. So I really appreciate that. I also wanted to mention Sarah from uh, Losing Weight Sarah. So I put her channel down below. I think I got Losing Weight Sarah, I think that's right. Um, she has been around with me from the beginning of our, of our YouTube, of our YouTube like experience. And so it's, it's awesome to see that she's also posting videos again. And, uh, so I try to watch her premieres, uh, whenever I see the notification for that. So go check her channel out. Uh, she's awesome. And if you have a channel that I don't know about, please post that in the comments and, uh, I'd love to connect that way. Uh, it's so helpful just to have the community of people who are all trying to do, you know, something similar um, and better ourselves. So yeah. Then finally is uh, all the snacks, all the snacks that I have. So I want to show you guys uh, what my uh, cupboard looks like. So this is just to give you a sense of how I stay <sighs> prepared. So I've got a lot of nuts here. We have our uh, wasabi soy sauce almonds, my favorite kind of flavor. I've got some seaweed packets, um, not filling at all. I wanted to point out something. I still have all of these like non-keto friendly snacks over here. Um, I have not eaten any of these things. Like I'm not even that tempted by it because I just I feel like I've been so motivated and I'm really invested in myself um, in terms of just like all these other snacks. So this is a Parm Crisp snack mix that's ranch flavored. And uh, these are really cool because they are little individual packets of peanut butter. So one packet, I believe, is four carbs. I'm trying to get that for you guys. Because um, with the fiber, it's four net carbs. And it's like just enough, you know? You don't feel like you're, you need more peanut butter. It's perfect. I also want to, um, if you guys don't know about these, these are phenomenal. Um, I found this on Amazon and they are, it's a very small amount. So I'm not going to lie about that. It's about it's his six almonds are in here, 60 calories. And this one I believe is four net carbs, but there's a chocolate peanut butter flavor in there. They are the perfect dessert. And then underneath there, I found these Rip Van wafers and it's their hazelnut flavor. And these are also like really, really good. It's like the perfect amount of of snacks so let me show you like that's what they look like they're not that big uh four carbs but again it's like the perfect amount of dessert for me but i'm also not a big dessert person i am a big salty snack person so i have a ton of these parm crisps i got a variety pack so that <clears throat> excuse me i can like you know um have different flavors i take uh one of these is 100 calories it's one carb uh per one of these the nacho flavor is a little too cheesy for me that's why i still have uh, some of those left over but i'll do that with my uh sandwich with my keto bread of course you have your pork rinds i'm not a big pork rind fan so these have been here for a while I'm not gonna lie about that i want you guys to know about this though this is um Oh my gosh, I made these chicken tenders. I, if you're interested in like a longer recipe video where I show you how to make those, um, I mix this with some uh, lupin flour and it was the, they were the crispiest chicken tenders that I've ever had on the keto diet. And then these, this is like the like most amazing thing that I've discovered. Um, this tastes like Chex Mix. There are even, there are, there are no pretzels in here. This is a lie. But there are little like pretzel type things in here. Excuse me. But there are like little pretzel type things in here that taste like pretzels. And then for those of you who have ever had Canalita Crunch, 
Um, they put their little cereal in here, but they flavored it as like a Chex Mix flavor. And for like one serving, it's four carbs. So you can only have one serving, really. You got to be careful with that. But anyways, that's just sort of my like closet full of keto-friendly snacks that has helped me to stay motivated this whole time. So yeah, that's that's about it for, you know, what what is keeping me motivated right now. Um, all these things are really helpful and they're helping me to finish out the 12 weeks. So this last week, as you guys know, uh, I mentioned that I was going to a dinner and it was my boss's house. So very challenging situation for me. I got really good feedback and advice from you guys. So I so appreciate that. I ended up just telling her she's Italian and of course she was about to cook some pasta and then she had the pasta and she said, so we're all having pasta, right? And I said, oh, actually I'm not gonna be having any of the pasta. And of course she asked me a million follow-up questions and I was pretty honest. I said, I'm you know, not eating carbs. I actually feel better without the carbs. And I'm actually, to be real with you, I'd be worried if I just ate a bunch of pasta tonight. So I kind of turned it into more of a, a health issue and less of a, I'm trying to lose a lot of weight or I'm trying to get skinny. I didn't want to have that conversation. And plus it was two other male colleagues and I just wanted it to, take the attention off of me. Let me just tell you that I'm not gonna eat the pasta, but I was able to eat um, some of the other items that she had. And I actually felt good about it because I didn't, you know, like with, I, I suffer with like an eating disorder and I grew up with that. And the thing that I don't want in my life and the thing that I'm trying really hard to move away from is be being so like OCD about food. I want to be able to be with my friends. I want to be able to go out on occasion. I want to be able to make plans with people uh, that, you know, there's food that's going to be there, right? So I want to be able to like participate in that and not feel like, oh gosh, I can't eat that because it has some carbs in it. So I just had a little bit. I had a little bit of her chicken parmesan, her eggplant parmesan. I stuck to the salad mostly. I didn't eat the dessert. Um, so I think I did, you know, I wasn't thinking of it in, in terms of like this black and white mentality. Because back in the day, if I'm doing a diet and I eat something that I shouldn't be eating, I would have after dinner gone to get like fast food because I would have thought, well, I ruined the whole day. I had that bite of that, you know, fried chicken. I, I ruined the day. I might as well go to McDonald's and get, you know, a 12 piece or a 10 piece chicken nugget. I haven't had chicken nuggets in so long. They don't make 12 pieces. Huh. <laughs> I used to get that all the time. The 10 piece chicken McNugget meal with French fries. But I would, I would always do it like after dinner or if I messed up that day, I would like use that messing up as an excuse to go like, do more damage, like eat more. And I didn't do that this time. I didn't do that. I was just like, no, this is actually how you become a more balanced individual and you fix your relationship with food. Food is not morally bad. It is not morally bad. And you are allowed to have a little bit of this and then you get right back on track later that night, next day, and that's what I did. So my measurements reflect all of that. I remember that the last time I measured in, I was 35.5 on my waist and 45.5 on my hips. Measured this morning, I am now 35.3 on my waist and 45.3 on my hips. So that is a 0.2 uh, inches lost on my waist and my hips. And again, these are just, you know, it's a slow, slow progress and measurements are also kind of like finicky because if you're retaining any water, then your waist, it's, it's a whole thing. The weigh-in video is next week, so I am hoping for uh, anywhere between, I'd be happy with seven to nine pounds, uh, week nine, but I'm doing a lot of like biking, like I said, so it's very possible that my, uh, like if my waist and hips are going down, that's really all I care about, but we will see next week what happens and how it impacts me emotionally. Uh, thank you all for following me, and uh, I will see y'all next week.